So this tree here, this was the first tree we planted. It was just a stick in the mud three years ago. And we're so excited for how much it's grown. And this year we got our first nectarine taste off it. They were small but really delicious. Um, it's overcome its problem with uh, leaf curl, which is really common for nectarine and peaches here in the Northwest. And it's become a very healthy tree. We have a lot of comfrey growing underneath it. We fed it a lot of food, really feeding this soil with all sorts of wood chips and compost, worms, worm casting, worm tea, all sorts of compost teas. And this tree is taking off and next year it's gonna be a big producer. I feel it coming. Who's this guy? So this fig tree was uh, another stick in the ground, not three years ago, but just two years ago now. And this year it's it's over eight feet tall. It's producing loads of fruit, um, which we're trying to see if they're gonna ripen this year or not. And uh, we're really excited for this tree too. This is gonna be a huge producer. We get a nice microclimate from the brown hot house there. The sun heats up this house side all day and spits back warmth at night. And we planned some of our trees in this area that need a little more heat like the figs and need it a little drier like the uh, nectarines there so this is why we chose to put these here and and that's something really important to consider on your property to think about where the temperatures are what the heat is like where the sun is throughout the day and start planning what needs to go where based on those sort of criteria and uh, we have no doubt next year this thing is is going to just go nuts just like the, uh, the nectarine there Coming over here, I put this in just one year ago. This is another nectarine. This is a uh, Northwest Hardy variety. It's a red nectarine. It's doing fabulous here. It's really taking off. And uh, it had a few little fruits on it this year, just after one year, but they, they aborted and dropped the fruit. So I'm not surprised because it's still a pretty young tree, but I suspect next year we'll get a couple of fruit off this tree. Uh, this is a new addition this year. I put in, uh, if you want to get a little closer up on this, I put in a couple of gummies. And gummies are nitrogen fixers. And so I put this one here next to this nectarine so it'll naturally feed nitrogen into this tree here. And I have another one back here. Um, but I'll be putting in a few more of those. Now you can keep gummies, they're kind of small, shrubby little trees but you can kind of keep them coppiced and smaller they do produce edible fruit but the real benefit is that they're good companion plants so you get companion planting makes a nice guild and you get a little bit of edible fruit their fruit is really great for making preserves so excited to get some gummies on the property here you can see we have another fig this is a different variety this is a brown turkish and uh, we had this in a different area last year and I didn't like where it was going to be because I thought it was going to put too much shadow on our annuals. And uh, these things are known to be prolific growers. So I'm putting it next to this other fig here. And uh, it, it did pretty well this year for being on a transplant. It does have a few fruit. And I suspect they'll ripen up by the end of the summer. But again, this tree is getting all that heat coming off the house. So this is a good place for it here. And although it's the end of the day right now and it looks a little sh uh, shaded here, we get a lot of high sun in this area. So this is the experimental banana patch. Now, um, I was told that bananas probably would not grow well here in the Northwest because of the limited sun. Uh, however, with global warming, the temperatures and the sun here has gone up and up and up and we had another record hot summer this year. And so I started off with uh, this banana last year and it's got eight, eight pups this year. So um, it's doing fine. It's growing well. And this is not a, a fruiting banana. This was an experiment I just wanted to try with a hearty hardy banana before I moved on. This year now I've ordered some high mountain Javanese bananas and I have them growing in our nursery and they're doing absolutely fine. Uh, next year I'll get them in the ground. I'll pull them in this winter just, uh, just to let them adjust to the area a little bit better and next year I'll get them in the ground. Now if you want to start experimenting with banana there's a few horticulture tips that are really helpful. First of all bananas 
they need a lot of nitrogen they need a lot of water they need a lot of food they're really uh, they're kind of sucks they suck nutrients out of soil so you really have to make sure that you're feeding them well watering them well and then at the end of the season you have to cut them back wrap their stock with plastic um, of some variety to keep water out from going in and then you want to just pile on uh, a bunch of compost or uh, leaves or something like this to insulate them any sort of um, mulch to insulate their their roots and their uh, corms so that they don't freeze over winter and when you do that when you pile a bunch of mulch on top of them the microbes in the mulch essentially create heat and sort of keep their their root stock happy and warmer than the region that you're living in and that's sort of a little horticulture trick is to build them a, a bit of a winter shelter and uh, you can you can get them around some of the growing um, restraints that might come in a little bit cooler area so we'll be seeing in the next year I believe that I will be maybe the first I don't know maybe someone else is trying it but one of the first banana growers in the Northwest and that's gonna be super cool so these are the uh, High Mountain Javanese bananas I was telling you about. These are true fruiting bananas. They create a delicious, real sweet banana that some people call like an ice cream banana. And it was an experiment. I bought these uh, online. They came as a single leaf uh, at the beginning of the season. And you can see already that this one threw out a pup. So that's a pretty good sign that it's adjusting to this region just fine. Uh, that it's moving into a reproductive mode. They look healthy. Um, I feel that we're without question going to have success with this experiment. Uh, in the nursery, I have a lot of stuff started here that's, that's eventually going to go on to the property. This year I brought in some, um, these are temperate. Uh, this is a, um, a Korean pine nut, nut pine. And these are fine to grow in colder, wetter regions and they produce a really high quality highly sought after uh, delicious pine nut. Now I wanted to get stuff on the property this year that could create some good healthy fats. I didn't feel like we were growing enough healthy fats on the property and we don't have a lot of space for doing like big walnut trees. So um, I researched some things and, and I got these Korean nuts in and um, we'll show you in a second. I also have some Italian stone nuts which is another type of pine nut. Uh, over here in these little pots I have um, some alder saplings and those came I dug them up right here on this property these are a native tree they also fix nitrogen and you can also copus them then that when I say copus I mean you can stop them from growing into a tall tree and keep them kind of shrubby and this is a really great technique for when you're doing permaculture and you have limited space uh, you can plant these next to things you want to feed. They'll fix nitrogen and you can kind of keep them in a shrub level. And I'll probably get more into that in another video, but I just want to put that out there to kind of make your brains turn a little bit thinking about when you're uh, setting up your program and your infrastructure and your planning of how you're going to plant things together. All right, well, this is one of the pride and joys of this season was uh, this persimmon I planted. It was so tiny when we got it. It was literally like this big. And in three years, we've grown it up to fruiting. This is the first year that it's put on fruit. We've probably got two dozen persimmon. This is a, uh, I think this one's a, a coffee cake or chocolate variety. I'd have to look at the tag. I can't remember which. But how exciting that it's grown so well and uh, that it's fruiting this year and persimmon are absolutely one of my favorite fruits and I chose a lot of persimmons on this property because they they last so long so when I was thinking about planning this permaculture setup I wanted a mixture of staples and of uh, foods that would last different times so I really am looking to foods that last a long time that can be stored in the winter and will continue to bring up fresh ripe fruit into December and January and persimmons will do that and so they make an excellent addition to any temperate permaculture setup so we're excited we'll let you know how they taste in a couple of months so in the last couple of years I told you about how we were trying so hard to just work with our dear friends 
Well, this year has been a real challenge. Uh, we have lost, it's like the memo got out to the deer community around here, and we have actually lost quite a bit um, of our trees to deer. So I've started creating these, these uh, elevated cages, and um, I think once we get the trees over this height, it'll be just fine. I, in, the trees seem to do okay if the deer just browse a little bit, but it's when they get really defoliated and they can't do their photosynthesis that they start to have big problems. But this, um, this is a mulberry tree. It's an Oscar mulberry. They're supposed to be one of the most prolific, uh, sweetest mulberries, and it's doing fantastic. Again, this was just a tiny little stick in the ground. I had to order this over the internet. These are hard trees to find around here. And it put out its first fruit this year, However, I don't know how it tasted because the deer ate it. <laughs> so uh, we're working with that and uh, we have quite a few of these on different trees around the property right now. We've had to really get into deer management as well as slug management. <laughs> but with any, anywhere that you live, you're going to find some challenges and you're going to have to find ways to work with nature. So we just try with limiting the amount of foliage the deer can take off and that's that's a good uh, strategy to working with nature while protecting your trees.